Now I have before me the HP Omen with the latest i7-12700H and RTX 3060 GPU. Now there's no differences between this year's model and last year's model in regards to the features and the build and all those intricate details. So if you wanna know about that and my feelings and impressions on those details, I'll link up some videos at the end of this one. But for now, we're gonna cover the performance and see if this model has what it takes for your creator needs. Now jumping into Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench single core and multi-core, you can see that this laptop stands amongst the other 12th gen CPUs and outperforms some of the latest Ryzen 9 and Ryzen 8 CPUs. Now I haven't reviewed a ton of Ryzen yet, I hope to in the very new future, but right now we have a lot of great Intel products and Intel continues to show itself as the higher performing CPU at the moment. Now jumping into some real world benchmarks, we're gonna take a look at Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, and PTC Creo. And as you can see, the HP Omen handles each of those softwares very well. With the i7-12700H and RTX 3060 with six gigs of VRAM, you're gonna have what you need for 3D modeling. Now, if you're gonna be somebody who's using SolidWorks, I recommend getting this laptop with say eight gigs of VRAM or maybe even 16 gigs of VRAM. And that would be either the RTX 3070 or the RTX 3080. Now, if you head over to HP's website and check out the different customization options, you may be able to go ahead and upgrade that to the RTX 3070 or the RTX 3080. But as this is configured, it handles SolidWorks well, but not incredibly. The Zephyrus G14 with its AMD Radeon GPU that has eight gigs of VRAM, as you can see, that does SolidWorks very well. I recommend a little more VRAM for SolidWorks. Now, if you go ahead and upgrade it, then you'll get even better performance in the other 3D modeling softwares as well. So really it can't hurt to make the upgrade. It's just what your budget may allow. Now, moving on to After Effects, you can see that this laptop does well compared to the other 12th gen CPUs on the benchmark. Checking out Photoshop. Again, this laptop has no problems in Photoshop. Really anything above 500 is good. Anything above 700 is amazing. And then at the 900s, it's just like this laptop is gonna cruise like nobody's business. So really good inside of Photoshop. Now moving on to video editing, this laptop has fantastic playback in Premiere Pro, zero drop frames in 4K, which is becoming the norm. But then looking at B-Raw, we only had 456 drop frames and then red footage, hold the phones, only had 956 drop frames. Now that's out of 16,177 in the project. And that has motion graphics, music, B-roll. It has a main clip and a secondary clip. It's got, you know, it's a loaded project. And to see that much playback was very exciting for me. These laptops continue to get better and better. And the encoders inside of the Intel CPU are doing very well. It's so exciting. I actually was having my video editor here in the studio and she had the laptop unplugged and I was laughing because I came over and she's like editing no problem with 6K B-RAW on this laptop. And I thought, hey, if you plug it in, it'll be even faster. And she's like, oh yeah, I noticed it was like a little bit glitchy here and there. But like the fact that she was unplugged, editing 6K B-RAW and just was breezing through it without really any issues, I thought was fantastic. So this laptop will run great on power, off power, even for 6K B-RAW. So in great hands here with this one. Now, as far as the export times are concerned, great export times. Uh, when I was looking at the B-RAW and red footage export times, some of the best I've ever seen on my channel out of a laptop, 16 minutes for B-RAW, 18 minutes for red footage. And then of course you have those nice low 4K and 1080p export times if you're gonna be working in those specific resolutions. Now, as far as the fan noise and thermals are concerned, this laptop did it well. It's actually better than last year's model by a couple degrees. During the 4K export on performance mode, I saw 50 decibels of fan noise at 68 degrees Celsius. That is such a cool temperature, very exciting. And then if I wanted to get a little bit quieter fan noise, I went to balance mode. I only saw 72 degrees Celsius and about 45 decibels of fan noise. So good fan noise, excellent thermals. And then if you're on battery power, let's say you unplug the computer and just edit on battery power and then export, saw 30 decibels of fan noise and a 52 degrees Celsius on the CPU temperature. So this laptop has great thermal management and complements that with great performance. 
For DaVinci Resolve, I continue to see Intel improve on its export times. Got about a two minute and 50 second export time for 1080p and about eight minutes and six seconds for 4K. Intel has not historically been known to be great in DaVinci Resolve, but it continues to get better and better. And of course, we'll have smooth playback. That is one area that Dissolve does well. It really allows you to have smooth playback with most laptops, especially most H series laptops. Good as well with this one. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, of course, links are in the description below. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you wanna know my full thoughts about my impressions of the build quality, the specific features, the webcam, how the speakers sound, how the keyboard is typing, you can go ahead and click to tap the screen here on one of these videos and get you that information you need. Otherwise, likes of this video has brought you some value and subs if you wanna miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.